Okay, here's another example for ray diagramming for curved mirrors. So what I have here now is a convex mirror or also known as diverging mirror. So we have our given here. The given are the distance of the object, 3 centimeters, the focal length, which is negative 2 centimeters, and we also have the height of the object, which is 4 centimeters. So the same thing that we did a while ago, we have to draw first the principal axis, okay, using this ru ruler. And the next, of course, we have to determine the important points. So let's have the vertex, okay, and let's measure the focal length. So our focal length here is 2 centimeter. So here from the vertex okay, to here, this is our focal length and this is our focal point or focus. And if we're going to double the value of our focal length, we will have our center of curvature. So 2 times 2, that gives us 4 centimeters. Okay, so this is our center of curvature. Now, since this is a convex mirror, okay, from our previous activity, you all know that it's similar to a flat or plain mirror. It will never ever give you a real image. It's, it is always virtual. So, for the image, we will always be using the back side of the convex mirror or the back or behind the mirror. So, we must have enough space here and we will have same marks or points on the for for the virtual side okay so let's do that so let's have our focal point here so again it is two centimeter so let's have f prime here and then let's have our center of curvature also which from the vertex to here let's have our c prime for our center of curvature for our virtual side and let's draw our our convex okay so again if you have your compass or your protractor you can draw it or if not you can always okay assume that you are drawing a semicircle okay so again this is the reflective side this is the the back of the convex mirror so here okay let's measure first the distance of the object from the convex mirror which is three th uh, which is three centimeters so from the vertex let's have our okay so here from here that's our objects uh, distance and since we have our given height of the object here which is four centimeter and we can actually measure that okay so let's have four centimeter here Okay, so this is our object in front of our convex mirror, which is 4 centimeters in height and 3 centimeters away or in front of the convex mirror. So similar to what we did for concave mirror, let's have the four principal rays here. Let's have the P, F ray. Let's have the F, P ray. Let's have the V, B ray. And let's have the C, C ray. So again, at least two of these will do. Now, for our PF ray, again, it is an incident ray. It is an incident ray that is parallel to our principal axis. Let's have it here. However, it will be reflected as if it came from this virtual focal point or focus. Let me repeat that again. For convex mirror, we will be using more of the virtual side. So we that's why we have our virtual focal point and we have our virtual center of curvature. So for our PF ray, we have a ray, we have our incident ray here, but it will be reflected as if it came from our virtual focal point or focus. So we can actually draw that here. Okay, let's have it this one here. And again, we can extend our reflected ray, okay, as if it really came from 
Okay, let's use our broken line here or dashed lines. Okay, because it's behind the mirror. So let's have this for our virtual ray. Okay, so this is our PF ray. Okay, next, we can also have our FP ray. But for FP ray, as if the incident ray is moving towards this virtual focal point. However, you have to stop here the moment it reaches the surface of this convex mirror because it will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. So let's have our incident ray from the tip of our object and as if it is moving towards our virtual focal point. As if it is moving towards our virtual focal point, but we need to stop because it will be reflected okay, parallel to our principal axis. So it will be reflected parallel to our principal axis. Okay. However, again, we can extend our reflected ray using dash lines here. And as you can see, the virtual rays merge at the back or behind the mirror. Okay. Now to verify further this, we can still use our VV ray here. Okay, we will apply the law of reflection. So from the tip of our object, moving towards our vertex. And let's have the reflected ray, same angle as the angle of incidence here. And we can extend our reflected rays behind the mirror. Because it's very obvious why we, uh, why we extending our reflected rays here. It's because again you notice that our reflected rays here they do not merge. That's why convex mirror is known as diverging mirror. Okay, so what we can do is extend it. Okay, because again the uh, the virtual rays might merge. Okay, okay they're gonna merge here behind the mirror. So notice the merging of the virtual rays here behind the mirror and again it is above the principal axis so what we can do is from the, there from the tip from the merging point of the virtual rays to, then to the our principal axis and again if it is above the principal axis then therefore the orientation of our image is similar to the orientation of our object so this is now our image okay and it's very obvious we can see now the difference between our image and our object so let's use the acronym lost so for the location where is the image located it is located behind the mirror sorry behind the mirror or at the back of the mirror what about the orientation now comparing the size of our of our uh, image and our to the sorry where for the orientation it is upright now when it comes to the size okay well, it's very obvious if we, even if we use our ruler we know that our image is smaller okay compared to our uh, object so we could say smaller and for the type since it the image was formed behind the mirror then it is a virtual image okay so this is the characteristic of the image form by a convex mirror no matter how you put it away from the mirror or very close to the mirror or at the focal point the image will always be be uh, behind the mirror form behind the mirror upright smaller and virtual while it's different when it comes to the concave mirror because one of the main factor that affects the image that can be formed by a concave mirror would be the distance of the object.